one thing that we see often is a young singer coming along with the highest level of talent and apparently good preparation, and a career begins, and then within a few seasons, either the singer has found his way or has lost his way. Too often, lost it. You are two who found your ways and held them very securely. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about what the factors are, besides the talent and preparation, that make it work or not work. Marilyn. You start. I can start? Yes. Okay. Um, when I was young, <laughs> long ago, we, had, um, lit we made little steps. We were first beginner for three years, let's say, beginners. What are the troubles you avoid? by taking the little steps. You know, you have to develop your art and your being, as a human being, you have to develop. You cannot be with, with 21 years uh, a genius. Perhaps you are a genius, fine. But uh, no, a normal person with 21 years, it's like, uh, I say, like Octavian, like Rosenkavalier or so, it's a stupid boy. <laughs> yeah, and, and it, it, one has to develop. Well, the thing is, is that in spite of the fact that people may think otherwise, this is a very deep kind of education that, that a, an opera singer, a leader singer, whomever, has to get. There are many, many layers. And I think even myself, I, when I was young, I, I didn't even know how many layers there are that one has to achieve in a way. It's sort of like going to nirvana, you know? <laughs> And you said it the right way, I think, the little steps that one takes. I mean, I started my opera career in Los Angeles when I was 20. But at 22, my aspirations were high, but I knew that I should go into a smaller place. So where did I go? I went for three years in the middle of the Ruhr Valley in Gelsenkirchen for three years <laughs> to be a beginner. You had to laugh at that. No, but, no, no, but it is right. It is right. It is right. Because you can choose, perhaps, now I go, I, I like to go to a good um, stage director, or you go to a good conductor, that you are, that you have the possibility to develop your art. And when it is, uh, and I say always, 30 years round. 10 years you climb up the mountain, 10 years you are on the top, and 10 years you, you struggle. <laughs> you struggle not to fall down. So <laughs> we did it much longer, but anyway. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I think that, um, I think in those first 10 years, you are also not only still you're building your, your artistic soul and everything. But I think we're still working on our voices a lot, of too. Course, of course, of you know? course. I have a sense that there are singers who have arrived at a level of ability to sing in a certain way, but then that they need some years to learn how to deliver that level consistently, night by night and through the season right. and in different roles and in and that's new where, roles. And that's where they need master teachers. Yeah master coaches, whatever Always. you want to call it. That's where we yeah. need the people that can really feed this to the young singers. I have to say, I think there's a big lack today in that. Big one. But it is not only, I think, to the young singers, because uh, I, for my person, I, I, when I was here in New York and I had to learn uh, Lady Macbeth for Vienna, and I went to Zinka Milanov to, to learn with, with her how to do it. So, I mean, when we are... Um, um, when we arrived at a certain level, we always need somebody who takes care about us. Yes. Always. You study always. I want to ask you some questions about technical training of young singers and your own sense of your technical approaches. Um, but I would love to play to the two of you two examples of yourselves singing. Oh, hey, oh. And maybe you can <laughs> oh, <no>. talk about... <laughs> I don't sing anymore, you sing. <laughs> <laughs> well, these are records that have been in existence a long time, and I play them sometimes to my students as examples of, let's not call it perfect, but if it isn't perfect, then we don't need to find perfection on the earth. <laughs> so, <Whoa. laughs> um, and uh, they're a little bit similar, very different repertory. I'm going to pl have uh, played a little bit of Marilyn Horn singing from Bellini's Norma, and Christa Ludwig singing a song of Brahms. And they both have to do with how a mezzo-soprano voice passes from high to low and how the registers are blended and what is legato, this great thing in singing. And so maybe we could play the two of them and then you can discuss <laughs> yourselves or each other.
great support, Krista. <laughs> that song has given me fits always because the phrases are so long. I learned it from my mother. Oh, I had oh. to learn it without my dad. So. Because, <laughs> yeah. No, because when you, when you choose the chest voice, then you don't need so much breath. And you have to know when you can go into this chest voice business and to come over in the so-called middle voice or head voice. And th so you can spare your, your breath. Very good. How would you describe what breath support means and how a singer knows that a note is supported? You know, my, my father, who was also a singer and also a teacher, he had... I did see, this is new to me. I only thought your mother oh, was no, a singer. Oh, I'm, no, I'm born into the stage, <laughs> into the <laughs> opera, and into the music. No, no. And um, he had always a famous uh, example. He said in, uh, in Salzburg, in this um, garden where all the, the water uh, fountains are... Mirabel? Mirabel. Not, not Mirabel, the other one. It doesn't matter. Um, there, when you have a little fountain, yeah, coming up, and a ping pong ball is dancing on this, and he said, this is like this, the breath, the the the, 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 zoile, what is this, the, zoile, the pillar, the, the, yeah. the column column of the of yeah. the breath, and the voice is dancing there on this breath, and if this goes down the the, the water fountain, then the, the the ping pong ball falls down. Mm. So this was always, and then my mother said, you have to be like um, hen with a lot of little hens, uh, chicken, yeah, a mm -hmm. mother chicken with l many little chicken under herself so and so broad and you have to breathe like this broad <laughs> and my father was this so I had a lot of <laughs> breath <for this. laughs> well I had this wonderful teacher named Edna Luce in Bradford Pennsylvania who taught me breath support when I was about seven or eight years old and she did it a much simpler way and I, I certainly I've held this belief since then that's a long time that if you we, we talk about this is the diaphragm for want of a better word right if you breathe and as you intake the air the diaphragm goes out and if you steadily keep it there this takes the broad part of it takes over yeah. automatically uh, yeah. <laughs> so that it, the breath you know starts to creep <laughs> around so that also those wonderful muscles in the back you know under the shoulder blades a little bit lower they engage so that if you have to concentrate a lot of i've heard a lot of teachers say well you know you push it in push it out and then you tuck it in and then you i mean you, that's too complicated this is normal when when you sing then the, the then it goes in so i think the, the explanation yeah. that your father made was great that's perfect it yeah is, that seems hard, to yeah. express the idea of something that gives physical strength to the column of air while maintaining a relaxed muscular yeah, presence at the top of it dance. which is the ping pong ball and yeah. you know what's also good about that is that the the feeling or the thought of water is it's, not so forceful no, as no, something else would no. be. It's just a yeah. steadiness, you know? Yes, it's a not, steady it's, fluid and it's, pressure. And it's not locking it, as we say. Some people lock their air so that they can't go it any is, it is, further. I mean, it is quite normal to breathe, no? So Hopefully. When, when, you, when we are in bed, we breathe, we breathe right. When we are relaxed, we breathe right. And so it is the most normal thing, but it's nothing else. It's normal. <laughs> Both of you have really divided your careers quite thoroughly between opera and recitals, more perhaps than most singers of your level. And I wonder if you could just say things about what that has meant to you artistically and vocally. Well, I insisted from the time I got a manager that um, I would do recitals. I said, I am a recitalist, and I, this was in my middle 20s, and I had already sung a lot of recitals. And um, I insisted that I get recitals even when it cost me money for the first couple of years by the time I paid the airfares and the accompanist and everything I and of course the agent's fee uh, <laughs> they take. I, <laughs> they take. Uh, I was uh, into my own pocket but luckily within a couple of years 
I was making some money at it. But that was my insistence. And it has to be because uh, I was educated in this repertory. Uh, most people know that I had uh, a lot of uh, study with Lotta Lehmann, who really opened the doors for me to show me what, a, what song singing can be. Wow, it's a miniature story and, you know, each thing that you do. And uh, so that to not be involved and experience that huge repertory that's out there. You know, we're not horn players or tuba players or bassoon players. We have everything at our fingertips to choose from in the vocal repertory. So I, I could have never uh, missed that. Plus, I, there's something about the immediacy of the recital that I always felt comfortable with, with the people there. And, and, and finally, when I got a little more analytical about it, I said to myself, well, when I sing opera, I feel like I'm going out to the public, over the orchestra and out to them. When I sing recitals, I feel like I'm bringing the public mm -hmm. to me. <laughs> You feel so too? Yes, it is like a circle from uh, a, a circle is, is closing, uh, like electricity. You come out and you feel in the moment if this will be good or not, <laughs> because this is the response of the audience. And this goes, I say fr now from me, from myself, it goes around to the audience and comes back.